Hi everyone! Today we'll be doing a high yield step one review and this one's going to focus on fungi. So similar to the other videos, I'm going to be presenting a clinical vignette and then take a few seconds, pause the video, uh, try to guess what pathogen or condition that I'm talking about and yeah, let's get started. So the first patient's going to be from either Mississippi or Ohio. We're going to see macrophages filled with pathogen and the patient's gonna have a history of cave exploration and then bird and bat droppings. So this is gonna be histoplasma. The next patient's gonna be from Eastern or Central US and we're gonna see broad-based budding. So this is going to be blastomyces. The next one's going to be a patient that comes in from California or Arizona, and we're going to see circle-shaped spherules filled with endospores. So this is going to be coccidioides. So these three pathogens are commonly tested and we need to compare these to each other and location is going to be really key here. Okay, so when you see a question that mentions a specific location, definitely be thinking about these three pathogens and use these key details to differentiate the answers. The next patient's going to come in with itching between the toes or thick nails or the skin's going to have a flower-shaped scaly, very itchy lesion on either the head the body or the inguinal region. So this is going to be a dermatophyte infection with either microsporum, trichophyton, or epidermophyton. Okay, and this causes the tinea infections. The next patient's going to come in with a hypopigmented spot on the back, and we're going to see spaghetti and meatball appearance on KOH prep. So this is going to be tinea versicolor, and this is going to be due to malassezia furfur. The next condition is something that comes in with white patches in the mouth that scrape off, or white thick vaginal discharge. So this is going to be due to candida albicans, and we often see pseudohyphae on KOH prep for candida. And the white patches in the mouth that are easily scrapable, this is known as oral thrush, and it's very commonly seen in immunocompromised patients, such as patients that, that have HIV or AIDS. And then Canada can also cause a genital infection where you have this thick, white, cottage cheese-like discharge. So the next condition, we see acute angle branching, and it affects patients with a low neutrophil count. So this is aspergillus. Aspergillus likes to affect patients that have neutropenia. The next patient has AIDS and then gets a fever, headache, and stiff neck. And then we see India ink stain that shows an organism with a thick capsule. So this is Cryptococcus neoformans. And this causes cryptococcal meningitis, so that's why we get the meningitis symptoms like fever, headache, stiff neck. And then really commonly for this pathogen, they like to actually show a picture of the India ink stain that shows these organisms that have a really thick halo looking appearance, which represents that thick capsule. So the next patient's going to have uncontrolled diabetes with a black necrotic lesion around the eye and nose area. So this is mucor and rhizopus. It's also called mucor mycosis, and it's often seen in patients that have diabetic ketoacidosis, really high blood sugar levels, and there's a blackening around the skin on the face. Okay, the next patient has AIDS and then gets pneumonia, and we see diffuse bilateral interstitial lung infiltrates, and we use silver stain.
Okay, so this is going to be pneumocystis gyrovecchi. And this causes pneumocystis pneumonia, okay, also known as PCP. And again, this is going to be an AIDS patient that gets a pneumonia, and it's going to be bilateral, and the stain here is really important. The next patient is going to be gardening and then develops pustules in a line across the skin that follows the lymphatics. So this is sporothrix. This is also called Rose Gardener's disease. And so this patient might be, you know, recently working outside in the garden and then gets pricked by a little rose thorn and then develops these skin lesions in a line kind of pattern. And sometimes they show a picture of somebody with these pustules in a line on the arm in the lymphatic uh, region or even on the leg. Okay, so look out for sporothrix. So thank you so much for listening to this video. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. And we're going to be going over bacteria, viruses, and parasites soon as well. So look out for that. Good luck studying.